start by giving all praise on and glory to Yahweh, Bahasim Yahweh Shai, Waha Rakakwadash in Hebrew, that we be giving praises to our Almighty Heavenly Father Yahweh in the name of his only begotten son Yahweh Shai, who is our Lord and Savior, and the Holy Spirit, which is the Rakakwadash. Double honors to the elders and apostles of Great Millstone for teaching us his truth. Honest to the brethren that's laboring and doing the work to push his gospel, risking their life and freedom to do so. Peace and blessings to the hopeful elect, the one third of our people that's returning back to Yahweh and Yahweh Shai during these final moments so that he will have mercy on us and judgment. So we back with another lesson through the power and spirit of Yahweh, Bahashim Yahweh Shai. And this lesson is going to be titled Something um, Most People Were Created in Vain or Most People was created to be destroyed. Some along those lines. <clears throat> so this lesson was inspired by an encounter that I had with an Edomite a few weeks ago. And pretty much they was listening to this truth. And the main focus of our conversation, uh, what the main thing we were talking about was the Gentiles. And I was telling him that the Lord didn't come for the other nations. Those Gentiles that he came for was actually Israelites that was living like Gentiles because they were scattered amongst the people and they took on the identity and the customs of their oppressors. <clears throat> Just like the Negroes, Hispanics, and Native Americans, they took on the identity that our oppressors gave us. We didn't give ourselves Negro and Mexican that was given to us. And now I was him also that this picture is a more accurate representation of the Lord because he was trying to make the Lord out to be sweet Jesus. And I gave him Matthew 10 to 34. You know, the Lord said, I came not to bring peace, but a sword. So that's who the sword is for. That he only came for the lost sheep of the house of Israel, the Negroes, Hispanics, and Native Americans, and salvation is only for the house of Israel, the Negroes, Hispanics, and Native Americans. <clears throat> so he got kind of sarcastic, not in a disrespectful way. He said, so this is the Lord right here with a sword pointing at the people saying, if you're not from the nation of Israel, pretty much F you, you know, screw you. And that's kind of correct. And I told them it's not just the other people that the Lord is bringing a sword to. It's also to the nation of Israel. That's Zechariah 13 and 8. Two thirds are going to be cut off and die, which would be the non-believers among our people. And the one third going to receive mercy and receive salvation. So the sword, Yahweh Shai pointing, that's really to the whole world, even the nation of Israel being the two-thirds. But we're going to make sense of what that, what that Edomite said was actually correct. You know, the Lord pointing at the rest of the world saying, you know, death to you. But we're going to show this. So pretty much most people were created in vain. So again, most people was created in vain. And something that's vain, meaning, you know, it's useless, it serves no purpose. So most people created have no use and they was created without a purpose. And the only purpose of being created was to be destroyed. <clears throat> so Romans 8 and 20, for the creature was subject to vanity, not willingly, but by reason of him who has subjected the same in hope. So, yep, the creature man, people, human, but more specifically, this creature here would be the Israelites, the elect, was made subject to vanity. Not willingly, you know, we wasn't, we didn't put ourselves in this vanity, being given the law and broke the law, not being punished for the law. The Lord knew that we was going to break the law. That's the vanity that we were subject to, it was, but not willingly. You know, it wasn't our will to be subject to this vanity, but whose will was it? 
by the reason of him, Yahweh Shai. It was his will for us to give us the law, we would break it, then we would be punished. But by reason of him who has subjected the same in hope. So we were subjected to vanity, now we're subjected to hope. That's the difference between the elect and the rest of the world. The rest of the world is just straight up subjected to vanity. Created without a purpose, no higher use, no importance to the Lord. But with the <clears throat> elect, those of us that's in the truth, we was made subject to vanity temporarily because now we subjected to hope. You know, that's going to lead to the kingdom of heaven, everlasting life, immortality, everything good that we can imagine. But again, this is dealing with the elect, but all of us are subject to vanity to serve the Lord's purpose and not willingly, but by his will. So when we come <clears throat> to Romans chapter 9 and 19, that will say then unto me, why doth he yet find fault for who hath resisted his will? So, yeah, we were subject to vanity by the will of the Lord, not by our will. But again, who hath resisted his will? Nobody can resist the will of the Lord. If you was created without a purpose to be destroyed, you're going to be destroyed. You can't change that. Most of the people that's seeking the Lord, that's seeking mercy and repentance, they doing it in vain. Because they was created to be destroyed. There's no hope for them. You can read, study, and pray 24-7. That the Lord made you to be destroyed, that's how it's going to be. <clears throat> On the other hand, the Lord created the one-third, the elect, those of us that's sincere in his truth. He created us uh, to receive mercy and to receive the kingdom of heaven to be saved. But again, why doth he yet find fault? For who hath resisted his will? Nay, mean is no, no, but, O oh man, who art thou that replies against God? So yeah, how can you question God on how he doing business? How can you question him on what he's going to bring to the earth? After the Lord created most people to be destroyed and a small remnant to be saved, who are you to reply against Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai? Shall the thing formed say to him that formed it, Why hast thou made me thus? So can the thing made, can people say to the Lord, Why have you made me this way? So for those that's going to be destroyed, you can't question the Lord, Why did you make me to be destroyed? Because the reality and existence this is the Lord's movie. The Lord made the movie how he wanted to. Different directors, you know, different directors that make movies and people won't like the movie for this reason or this reason. People say, I didn't like how that was written. Well, you didn't make the movie. The director made it. And it's according to his will. Life and existence, everything that's going to play out, it was made uh, for the will of the Lord. So again, shall the thing formed say to him, to the Lord that formed it, why hast thou made me thus? So yeah, you can't question your role in the Lord's movie. Just be happy you got a role, even if your role is to just be destroyed. Because many directors, they make movies and characters. The character's purpose, a lot of times, is to die off. Somebody got to die in the story. Have not the potter power over the clay? The potter is the person who makes the pot out of the lump of clay. Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai, the Lord is the potter. We are the clay. So the Lord got power over us. He got, and if you think about the potter, they shape and form the pot. They round out the edges. They hollow it out. So you think about a potter forming the pot, rounding the edges, 
hollowing out, that's the Lord shaping and forming our destiny in the palm of his hands. <clears throat> so have not the potter, Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai, have power over the clay of the same lump to make one vessel to honor and another to dishonor. That vessel to honor would be the one third, the people that's going to receive mercy and salvation, to keep it short. And another to dishonor, that's going to be most of the people that's going to be destroyed in judgment. So the Lord, who is the potter over the clay, the director of his own movie, he made certain people to love and certain people not to love, certain people to preserve and keep alive while the others would be destroyed. And that's going to bring us to our next scripture. We're going to get second Ezra chapter nine, verse 22. Cause again, I've been saying that most of the people was created in vain to be destroyed. And that's in the scriptures. You know, we're going to always back it up. Second Ezra nine and 22. Let the multitude perish then, which was born in vain. So yeah, the Lord said, let the multitude perish, which was born in vain. Meaning the people that was created to be destroyed, let them perish. Let them now die. <clears throat> and let my grape be kept and my plant for which, for with great labor, have I made it perfect. Now this matches up with Romans 9 and 21. <clears throat> you know, the, the potter that got power over the clay because the Lord says, let the multitude perish then which was born in vain, this would be the vessel of dishonoring. You know, the vessel of dishonor, that's that multitude which was born in vain that was made to perish. And let my grape be kept, my plant. That grape, that plant that's going to be kept is going to be the vessel of honor. You know, think of a plant, it's like a family tree. So that family tree would be the nation of Israel. Not the whole tree, but just one third of it. That's the Lord's elect. And from a portion of that tree, the Lord is going to make a whole new family tree uh, based off the elect. <clears throat> so again, let the multitude perish then, which was born in vain. And let my grape be kept in my plant. For with great labor have I made it perfect. Yeah, and people... It's foreign to the people that the Lord is coming to destroy most of the people of the earth. Forgetting this is the same God, <clears throat> the same Lord that flooded the earth and killed everybody. Left eight people remaining. And those people was trapped on the boat. They barely escaped. They was right here with the water. People forget that's the same God that's returning to bring judgment again. People forget that story, but even with Noah in the flood, have not the potter power over the clay, the same lump to make one vessel unto honor, that was Noah, their sons, and their wives. They was the vessels to honor, to receive mercy and salvation, and another to dishonor, that would be the people that died in the flood. Those people that died in the flood, that was the multitude that was to perish, that was born in vain. And who did the Lord keep? That grape, that plant. Because from Noah and his sons, they repopulated the whole earth to what we have today. The Lord going to do that once again. He going, you know, the multitude that was made to perish, that was born in vain, they're going to be wiped out. Then that plant, the one third of the family of Israel, is going to repopulate the earth. So, let the multitude perish then, which was born in vain. It played out before, it's going to play out again. And that's why, when we come to our next scripture, to Jeremiah 25 and 33, it reads, And the slain of the Lord shall be at that day, 
from one end of the earth even to the other end of the earth. So yeah, the slain of the Lord gonna, gonna stretch across the entire world, from America to Russia, from Antarctica to the Arctic, South America to Europe, India to Australia, China to Africa, from one end of the earth to the other. And that would be the multitude to perish that was born in vain. <clears throat> and this happened before with Noah and the flood. That the slain of the Lord was from one end of the earth, even to the other. So the bodies was floating in the water. And then once the waters receded, all those bodies was lying on the ground. So that's the multitude that was to perish that was born in vain. <clears throat> Let's continue. And the slain of the Lord shall be at that day from one end of the earth, even unto the other. They shall not be lamented, neither gathered, nor buried. They shall be dung upon the ground. Dung is cow poop. So the Lord said, the slain of the Lord going to stretch from one end of the earth unto the other. They not going to be buried. Nobody is going to cry for them. And they going to be just like cow poop on the ground. You know, if you ever been on the farm, it's cow poop everywhere. Too much to bury, too much to clean up. That's going to be the multitude that was born in vain. This was written that the slain of the, that the, slain of the Lord going to stretch from one end of the earth even to the other. They're not going to be lamented for, meaning nobody's going to cry and mourn for them. Nobody's going to gather them. Wherever they die, that's where they're going to be. Nobody's going to bury them. They're going to be like cow poop on the ground. That was written. So for many people, this was their purpose. So, Which means you was born in vain. You was born to be destroyed. Being the other nations outside the nation of Israel and the two-thirds of our people, that don't come back to this truth. And for many people, for most people, the earth, in fact, this was their purpose. It was to be killed off in this movie. And that's going to take us to our last scripture. It's going to be Second Ezra 8 and 1. So why is the Lord going to kill off most of the people? It's because they part in the movie is up. The Lord has no more use for them. Second Ezra 8 and 1. And he answered me saying, The Most High have made this world for many but the world to come for few. What's this world, this present world? America, life under Esau, Edom, the so-called white man. This world, this kingdom, this system of government was made for many, but the world to come, the kingdom of heaven, the kingdom of Israel was made for few. So as many people on the earth right now, the Lord, about the right they part out the movie. The Lord gonna write them out of the movie by death. So in the movie, when you no longer have need for a character, you can't just make them disappear. You gotta write their death in the script. So the slaying of the Lord at that day being from one end of the earth even to the other, that's the Lord writing out the death of the multitude that was born in vain that the Lord no longer has any use for because the world to come, the kingdom of heaven is not for them. So the Lord about to, about to X out most of the people of the world because they not welcome in the next chapter, the kingdom of Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai and the elect. So, yup. The Lord is going to kill off most of the people. This ain't your sweet Jesus. This is our Lord and Savior, Yahweh Shai. Most people was created to be destroyed. That was the multitude created in vain. They don't belong in this next part of the movie, in the kingdom of heaven. So that's what's about to go down. But that's it for this lesson here. Until next time, Shalom.